Welcome back everybody. Got another fun and exciting tutorial for you today in ZBrush. Uh, let me know how the audio is. Uh, got a new microphone. Hopefully it's a little better. It sounds a little better to me, but you're the judge. Everyone always tells me that audio is bad and this and that, but hey, I'm not spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars to make these things for you. So you'll have to let me know in the comments. But today we're going to talk about 3D print cutters inside ZBrush. So take a look at this model here, which I did over the summer for work, and I wanted to scale it up and print it off of my FDM printer. Uh, the thing about FDM printers, they generate a lot of supports for anything with overhangs and stuff like that, so it's always better to chop it up a bit to help hide and eliminate some of the supports. So, and that's what I did. And as you can see, I've made multiple parts on here, uh, taking advantage of uh, ZBrush 2021 that uses, that could add thickness to a single-sided mesh, uh, uh, a mesh that's not closed up. So and that's basically what I did. I created all these little cutters that you can use to cut up a model quickly and it's almost it's almost a non-destructive which is really handy so so for starters the, I've got a demo file plus the cutters and some macros for you so all you have to do to install it is go to your Pixelogic folder so 2021 is the one we need and this the only one it's gonna work in so you go into that one you go to startup and you go to macros and then just uh, drop in 3D print cutters and everything should work fine. And then fire up ZBrush. And if you go under macros now, you should see 3D print cutters. Let me close up all this junk. All these other macros in here. Sorry about that. I need to clean house and clean my house. Okay, so 3D print cutters. All right, so let's go ahead and load up a demo that I already put together for you. We're going to turn off polyfill zoom in here and it's basically the demo soldier that uh, ships with zbrush i just uh dynameshed them into one unit added a a base and then mirror and welded them and i've already got a couple cutters in here so let's take a look at the wrist cutter and i'm going to solo it out and it it uses the live boolean system so you want to make sure that's on so if you turn it off you can see the cutters all right, so let me turn that back on, and let's go to the wrist cutter, solo. Let's see if I can isolate just one of them here. And as you can see, if I turn off dynamic, you can see what we're working with here. And this is just one of the insert meshes that comes with, uh, with the 3D print cutters. And there's a handful of them, and I will show them here in just a second. But basically, it just runs a script. You know, it inserts like this, and then you just run a macro of a couple different sizes. And then you end up with a little thickness to it. And then turn that off, boom. And now it creates the cut along with the keys. So let's load up our cutters okay so if you go back to the macro you can just do load cutters and it'll automatically load it up here there's 14 cutters in there let me hit M on the keyboard here so you can see the cutters and they're relatively simple objects so we'll just scroll through each one here they kinda got their own unique name so you kinda know what they are and then I also got this experimental one here, and that's doing our our wrist cut or our arm cut here that can actually act as a joint. And you can even insert a pin in here, but you'll have to scale that pin accordingly to whatever size pin you're working with. So let me go to that joint cutter so you can see it. Boom. Turn off dynamic. And double. There we go. Yeah, because remember, these are not closed up meshes. And you can see it's not super 
complicated at all, to be honest with you. And like I said, you can go in here and you can scale that pin right there to get the right size. Always make sure that you're running at the right scale. So you always go into Z plugin and scale master. And if we do, let me click on the soldier. Inch. All right, see. And this guy is 12 inches tall. Okay. So once you have your scale established, which I always recommend, make sure you get that established first before you start uh, doing your cuts and stuff like that. So you can get accurate representation of how thick that cut's going to be. And turn dynamic back on. Oop, I don't want dynamic on him. I want dynamic on the joint. There we go. Now it, now it looks right. Because otherwise, if it didn't have any thickness, it wouldn't cut correctly. So, let us uh, put in a couple cutters in here. So, say like we want to cut that foot off the base. We can do that easily. We could do uh, maybe cutter tub. And right now I've got him already on a cutter that has dynamic set. So what we could do is split mass points. So now it's its own. Turn on line fill so we can see what we're doing here. We can fix the rotation. There we go. And we can scale things accordingly. Okay, so it's cutting off the back of the ankle there. Okay. I'm sure I'm not going through the bottom there. All right. And we can do a quick mirror and weld on the X. There we go. Now it's on both sides. And if you go to macro and you do any any three of these configurations here if we do one you can see how tight that is so obviously you're going to want to experiment and see which one's t you know what your tolerance of your printer is so that one's going to be as tight as you're going to want to make it so let's just go with let's go with in between there there we go and we solo them just so you can see what it looks like that's the type of cut that it's making on solo there we go so now we got that one cutter in there uh, why don't we cut the legs so let's see which one do we want to use let's just use the simple cutter three oops don't do it while you're in in the move mode or it's gonna change out what you have down there so now let's do cutter three just draw it out okay and split mask so now it's its own separate subtool turn a polyfill here see what's going on let's go ahead and run the macro real quick we'll go to five And see, the nice thing about this is we could just do a standard move and we can move things around, do some fine tuning. Boom. All right. We'll just do a quick mirror and weld. And let's get that point back there.
so it doesn't weld. And get you to stay straight. Do a mirror weld. And it's still welded right there. There we go. So now we got another cut there. And if you come back here, you'll see I did this backpack cut back here. And this one's kind of interesting. This one is just, let's bring up our cutters real quick. This one was just the, I think the cutter bowl. And if we look at it, and then I just uh, moved it around, contorted it just right. Let me change the macro real quick. We'll go to five so you can see it. There we go. Now you can see it perfectly cuts right around the backpack which could come in handy if say like you want to paint just that particular part you can separate it just fine so say like we got all our cutters ready all you have to do now and everything is editable until this point well even afterwards actually all you have to do is just do boolean with subdivision okay now it makes a copy of it with all the cuts in place We'll turn on line and take the line part off. And if you just do go into your poly groups and just do an auto group, you can see all your different cuts you made and each one of these pieces is now separated from each other. So say like, well, let's take a look at the backpack. And there you go there's your backpack so now you can print that off in whatever orientation you needed to or whatever scale whatever your heart desires come up to the head you can see a, yeah, a little bit of garbage there it's no big deal one leg there you got your other leg here and with these here uh, obviously it's not going to work right out the gate uh, for it to pivot you so you'll have to actually modify modify this part here by smoothing it out so I'm going to go to standard Maybe just just for an example there but that'll help help it pivot on that one point there like I said it's experimental I haven't even tried it but maybe I'll give you guys some ideas on some uh, on some I you know some thoughts on making uh, complex joints go to the pelvis here and you can see it's all nice clean cuts and you can see you've already got little built-in tolerances to everything so that could be enough or you can go even tighter so so it'd be far less sanding for you to have to do later so but that's basically it guys I I know this was kind of quick and but hopefully you got the idea on how it works and Definitely shoot me an email or a message or whatever. Uh, show me what you cut up and how it worked for you printing. And uh, just let me know. Have fun with it and we will catch you in the next video. You guys have a great day.